Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video we want to learn how we can install Kubernetes and Linux. But before we go further and we start directly with the installation of Kubernetes, I would say it will be a very good idea that first we get a basic understanding of Kubernetes. For example, what is the architecture of Kubernetes, what are the most components of Kubernetes, or what are the most important processes that run over Kubernetes. This basic understanding would help us during the installation to understand everything better. So if you already know the concept of Kubernetes, so you can go to the second part of the video and watch the installation only. If not, you can invest maybe five minutes of your time to get this basic understanding of Kubernetes. So the goal of this video is that we want to learn how we can install Kubernetes on Linux and we get a basic understanding of its concept. So let's go and let's do it. Okay, I have prepared two PowerPoint slides about Kubernetes. We go through these two slides and after that we install Kubernetes practically on a Linux machine. So first, Kubernetes itself. So as you know, Kubernetes is an open source container management tool. It is developed by Google. And why we use it and why we need it? Because the increasing rate of our applications that run our containers make it necessary to have a tool to manage them. So for this case, we use Kubernetes. But what is the architecture of Kubernetes? Kubernetes is consists of two nodes. One of them is the master node and the other one is worker node or worker nodes. We can have Sora worker nodes. The master node uh, and the master node run the main processes of Kubernetes itself for managing the cluster. And on the worker nodes uh, run our application. The worker nodes are uh, connected to the master node and each node has a kubelet process running on that. So, summarize the architecture, summarize of the architecture of Kubernetes had two nodes, master node and the worker node. But what, has, what are the main processes that run on the master node? So on the master node, the first process is an API server. So this API server is like the, uh, the entry point to the Kubernetes cluster. The second one is a controller manager. It keeps an overview of what is happening in the cluster. So for example, if a container or a node runs or does not run, so it keeps this control manager, keeps an overview of those things. The other one is a scheduler. So the scheduler is responsible for scheduling of containers and it defines according to the server resources on which worker node, the next container uh, can be placed. The last one is etcd. Etcd is maybe the most important process that run on the master node. It is a um, key value storage and uh, it holds the current state of the Kubernetes cluster and works like a baking store for backup and for restoring. So these four processes are uh, the main processes that run on the uh, master node in Kubernetes. Here we have the, the main components of Kubernetes. The first one is pod. So pod is the smallest unit in Kubernetes and it is an abstraction over a container. So like if you want to make a comparison, it's like a container in Docker. And we can say that our application runs on this pod and each pod gets an IP address, of course, an internal IP address from the, the virtual network. The other component is service. So the service is like a you know, static IP address. If the, uh, the pod goes down, this static IP address remains, remains there. So service is like an permanent or a static IP address for each uh, pod. Ingress. Ingress with the use of that, we can access our application 
X term. So we can say ingress is for routing traffic into the cluster. Config map. So with the use of config map, we can uh, configure external configuration for our application. Suppose that you have a data bank and you want to, to connect this data bank to your application. You have to configure it in the config map so that the pod can use it. Secret. Secret is exactly like config map, but it is for the credentials, for example, for passwords or for your certificate. So if you want to config such things for your application, you will do it in the secret. Volume is the other is the another component of Kubernetes. So if the database of a pod goes down, the data will be lost. And because of that, with the use of this volume, uh, we can connect the pod uh, to a local or a remote storage. So if the uh, data will be lost, the volume is there and we don't uh, lose any data. Which one network? And which one network it enables that the master node and the worker node are the worker nodes um, to be able to talk to each other. So this is the basic understanding of Kubernetes. We don't want to have a, a Kubernetes tutorial just, as I said, as a basic understanding so that we can uh, understand the installation uh, uh, a little bit better and we can understand it deeper. Now we go further and we install Kubernetes on a Linux machine. Okay, now that we have a basic understanding of um, Kubernetes, let us uh, uh, install it practically in a Linux machine. So for that, um, we open a browser, in this case, a Firefox, and here we just type mini cube, we press enter. Here, mini cube start, we go to this site and we click on that. And after that, we scroll down a little bit, we go to the installation. But before we install mini cube, uh, let us know what mini cube is and why we need it. So, yeah, as I just said, um, Kubernetes consists of master node and worker nodes. And suppose that you have too many applications and thousands of containers that run on your machine. And for that case, you need too many uh, server resources. But with the use of Minikube, the Minikube create a cluster for us and uh, the master node and the worker node, all of them are uh, are together, both of, them, both of them are together. So with the use of that, uh, we can save a little bit um, server resources. So because of that, we, we use Minikube to create our cluster. To the installation, we go to the installation and here we select uh, um, the operating system that you want. We want to use install it on Linux, so we click on Linux. And here you see that we have two commands. The first one is for downloading the file. I just make a copy of that and after that we go to the terminal and I paste the command here and after that I press enter. It will be downloaded on our machine and we have to wait until it will be done. And after that we go further. Now it's done. If I make a list here, you see that we have the data here. The second one is this command. So I just make a copy paste of that and we go back to the terminal and I paste it here. And after that, I just press enter. You see that it is the, uh, the file that we downloaded and it will be installed here. So I press enter. And now if we change the directory to this directory, cd user local bin. And after that, if I make a list, you see that we have Minikube here installed. But now we, um, we have to start it. We go back to the documentation, start your cluster. Here, there is a command I just copy it, we go back to the terminal and I paste it here. So it will be here. It may be a little bit tricky, uh, but it's okay. We will do it 
together. Uh, Kubernetes, as I said, is a tool for, you know, for managing our containers, but Kubernetes needs, uh, needs Docker also uh, to be run, to be run as a Docker service. So it is a little bit confusing. In Kubernetes, we have the Docker uh, containers, but Kubernetes itself uh, will be it will be installed over Docker. So here you see that if Minikube fails to start, see the driver page. I just uh, open the driver page here, and you see that Docker for uh, all of the um, operating system Docker is uh, is there to uh, to start Minikube or our uh, Kubernetes with that. So it is the the command for starting that, but as a driver, we have to use uh, another flag, driver docker. It means that our cluster, our Kubernetes cluster will be run over Docker. So for that, you, um, you have to have installed the Docker on your machine. So if you have it right now, that's good. If not, you have to install it in one of the videos um, in my channel. I have a video about Docker, so you can install it, how you can learn, uh, get an understanding from Docker. So if you need it, you can go back and watch that video. Or if you want, just simply install Docker on your machine, you do it with the use of sudo apt install docker.io, this version of Docker. With the use of this uh, command, you can install Docker. So we don't. I don't need it right now because I have uh, installed Docker on my machine. So here I make a copy again of this command, and here I paste it. And after that, as I said, driver Docker. It means that we want that uh, our Kubernetes cluster runs over Docker. So we press enter and we check what will be happen. Maybe we get some error, but it's okay. We can also learn how we can um, you know, find, a, find a way for our error. So I just press enter. You see that we get uh, an error here. It is got permission denied while trying to connect to the Docker domain. A Docker demo. Um, it means that uh, we don't have any permission. So if we start this command with sudo also, we get another error. Uh, it means that here you see that um, the Docker driver should not be used with the root privileges. If you wish to continue as root use does. So we don't want to install it as a yeah, as a root. But here, for this problem, you see that we have a command here. So, um, it means that we can manage a Docker as a non-root user. It is better for the uh, security reasons. So, for that, you can first create a group with the use of sudo add group. So if you want to do it manually, add a group, this group must be Docker. And after that, you can add your user to this group. But here you can use this command simply here. I just make a copy of that. So what this command does for us is uh, it creates a group. This group is Docker. And after that, it adds our user to this group so that we can um, manage Docker with the use of uh, a non-user group, a non-user, a non-root user. So I press enter. Now we start Kubernetes one more time over Docker. Paste it here. So what we have done here, we have just created a group named Docker and we added our user to this group. And we have done it just for the security reasons. We manage our Docker with the use of a non-root user. Now we start 
uh, the command for starting mini cube. And as a driver, we use Docker. I press enter. You see that it will be uh, started. Kubernetes cluster will be started and it takes a little bit of time. So we have just to wait. Okay, now the installation is done. And as you see, it is um, uh, installed on our machine and we can start uh, to work with that. So you don't need to do anything. You just wait until the installation uh, will be done. Now, if we type minikube status and we press enter, uh, you see that everything is running, everything works fine. Now it is the time to interact with uh, with our cluster. So we go back to the documentation, interact with your cluster. You see that we have some options here. The first one is this kubectl. The kubectl is the uh, CLI, of, uh, CLI of Kubernetes. Here, if you already have kubectl installed, you can now use it to access your new cluster. So with the use of this command, we can access it if kubectl is installed on our machine. And if not, we can install it sudo app install kubectl minus minus classic. And um, with the use of that, you can um, interact with your cluster. So uh, for the development jobs, if you want, or the other possibility that you see uh, that you have, you can see your uh, mini cube dashboard here. For example, if we make a copy of that and paste it here, and if we just press enter, you see that here we have the the dashboard of the of our, our dashboard, and here is a. Kubernetes, you see that, and uh, if we have any ingress, if we have any pods, any jobs, and if we have anything that is running on our cluster, we can see it here. So um, that's it. Uh, we have installed it uh, on Kubernetes on Linux, and I hope that you liked it.